okay everybody so I just want to give you an update of what I'm working on and uh, then you guys can give me ideas of what I should do uh, as I go along with this process if you have any better ideas of what I'm thinking uh, shoot them at me um, basically this is my list uh, I got number one and two uh, as a uh, first one's a pulse motor which is just uh, you know get like a neosphere get yourself a little uh, Paul sensor and make yourself a uh, pulse motor try some stuff with that and then uh, what I consider a double pulse motor which is um, basically a uh, everybody has a single pulse motor where the north or the south comes around and it gets pulsed just on one uh, pole so if the north comes around and hits a hall sensor then it gets pulsed then it has to go past the south and back to the north again before it gets pulsed again so I consider what I'm going to be doing after that would be a double pulse motor. Uh, it's just what I'm calling it for now. It's uh, basically, I'll be pulsing it twice. I'll be hitting it once during the south pole and once during the north pole. So I'll be hitting it uh, twice as much. So I call it a double pulse motor. Uh, I actually already have built a pulse motor and a double pulse motor. I'll be doing more research with it, but I've got some videos I'll be posting um, after this video. So uh, if they're not already up, uh, look for them. Uh, the next thing in my research would be to build a three-stage um, oscillator circuit. Now, I got a different couple ways of doing this. Uh, basically, what uh, Marco says is that, uh, let me get into the call. Marco states that to properly pulse a rodent coil, you would actually... Uh, uh, well, you see there's three windings. One is nothing, and then you have two more uh, that represents the math. Um, you can look that up for yourself. It's hard, well, it's not hard to explain, but I'll let you figure it out. It's easy to understand. Um, <clears throat> so Marco states that you pulse one winding, and then uh, you pulse the next winding 180 degrees off, and then you pulse the blank winding. So basically it's on, off, on, and then off off basically so you pulse it one two three one two three one two three like that now I thought of a bunch of different ways to do this and um, basically what I'm going to be doing um, well, I'll just show you what I've done what I thought about here um, there's a free program it's called uh, circuit simulator it's from uh, this website here I'll uh, post a link on my um, on my stuff on my uh, what you call it down there at the bottom uh, look for that now here's what I originally thought up now I didn't build this particular circuit and there's another person on YouTube that used a similar type of circuit I'm actually working with him right now on some other ideas um, but basically if I hit the high here and you can see the oscilloscope down here I click it once you get three pulses and, and these are just 555 timers so you get one pulse on and off, one pulse on and off, one pulse on and off, and then I can restart the cycle and uh, basically have exactly what I need. And then I can hook up my polarity with my transistors or whatever. So this program is free. Um, it's pretty sweet. I will show you what I have come up with. Um, this was my idea because 5 5 timers are great, but uh, basically um, the 5 5 5 timers, each one has its own set of components and I believe it may be just a little off so what I have done here is uh, and this is just a basic oscillator um, using two inverters um, that, that was actually part of this program I just used it and modified it and then here's what I've actually come up with this is a uh, SN74 LS175 uh, I believe it's a TTL chip um, they make the CMOS chip and they make them a bunch of different different uh, versions but basically it's a uh, uh, some D flip flops, and they're just they're just cycling through um, each other. It's actually a bit registry um, where they slide the registry over. I can't explain it. You guys can look it up. But this is what I thought about doing. Um, and you can see here on my cycles, this is my pulse coming in here, and then my steps. These are stepping down, but you can get it to step up. It doesn't really matter as long as they cycle. And then there's three MOSFETs here, and they're powering LEDs in this version that I built. I will uh, post this on my stuff as well, so you guys can uh, uh, in you can load this into this program, 
and uh, play with it yourself. This is all interactable. It's Java. You have to have Java. But you can put in components and you can you can do a bunch of stuff. It's a really neat visual program as far as electronics are concerned. I actually really like it. So basically that's what I came up with. Now um, I've been talking with a guy on YouTube that has built a 545 timer version of this. Um, I don't know his username by heart, but you can uh, look that up. Just look up three-stage oscillator, rodent coil, and you'll find it. Uh, he's got some software design stuff he's working on. It's really neat. But here's what I come up with after that. Um, I, I remembered that I had a Lego Mindstorm, and I never really used it a whole lot, but this is a microcontroller. Uh, again, I don't really have money for any extra stuff, but I have this. Uh, I do not program well. I can program stuff. I do uh, a lot of programming in a different manner, but not this type of programming. But uh, this is an RCX uh, 2.0 Lego Mindstorm uh, controller. It's got three analog inputs and uh, three outputs that are pulse width modulated uh, up to 9 volts. Um, I can put analog signals into here, and it's got a D to A converter. So basically what I'll be doing is uh, some sort of a setup where I'll have each one of these a pulse. I really only need two. They'll just probably be visual. I would like to put some LEDs on the board so I can see it. Um, now as, as far as my inputs, it'll be like a frequency adjustment. I can uh, jump up a certain amount of frequencies or down and fine tune everything. But that's what I'm working on um, as far as my controller for uh, sequencing. Uh, or, uh, as Marco says that's the way you're supposed to pulse it and I've heard some good things about it that a few people have tried it so I'm just trying to find an easy way to do it without spending money because I don't have it uh, so I do have this and I will be working on that uh, I've got it all three on my list but it'll probably be a lot longer than that the other two on my list right now are uh, some more uh, uh, high voltage toroidal wound rodent coils and the other one I got is a, a high voltage toroidal wound um, April wind coil. I'm going to actually take, uh, I showed you these spools of wires before. I'm going to take these spools of wire. Um, I think this is 30 gauge, and there's a bunch of it on here, and wrap a rodent coil around it. Now, Jack from YouTube has had this genius idea, which I don't know why I didn't think of it because it's so smart. Everybody's looking for nice toroids uh, to wrap their coils around. Well, Jack took a slinky and basically formed it into a, uh, a donut and voila wrapped it up with tape and there you go a nice toroid so basically I got these at the dollar store uh, they were cheap uh, basically here's what it would look like um, this is what I'll be doing uh, this will be probably a little bit bigger I'd like to try to get this coil more I believe on the inner edge of this um, basically I'll be building two of these uh, both these spools one will be a rodent coil a standard rodent coil wind and the other one will be an April wind. And then I'll be able to use both of these as references comparing the two. Because uh, I think there's a few people out there comparing, comparing different types of coils. But I would like to do a direct size, um, you know, everything. Um, the, the reason this is going to take me a little while to do is because I have to unwrap my wire yet. Uh, get on recycling everything because um, I can and I don't have any money to spend. So... You can always find, always find stuff, um, as you saw in some of my earlier videos of all my recyclable goods. Um, this does take forever to get out, and this is like rock hard because they dip it in coating. Uh, you can break these up. You get, you get them. You break them up. You can get them out, and you can unwind it. And it'll work. Uh, pain in the butt. So it's going to take me a while, but I'll have that done. Um, so that's my list. And if you guys have any suggestions, anything, you guys let me know. If you got anything you'd uh, want me to try while doing one of these, um, that's great. Let me know. I, I am pretty busy with a lot of stuff. Um, and if I don't get back with you right away, I'll try my best to get back with you as soon as I can. So uh, leave me some comments. Send me some personal messages. Um, that's all I got for you guys. So we'll see how that turns out. And uh, I'll leave you at that. Alright, y'all have a good one. Bye-bye.